How y'all feeling? Y'all good? Did y'all enjoy yourself earlier? Yeah? Okay. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Everybody get a book? Okay. Good. So, <clears throat> real quick, athletes, raise your hands. Okay, cool. Athletes. Okay. What position you play, King? Well, what sport do you play? Okay. And baseball? Okay, cool. Do you play running back? Okay, cool. Athletes, put your hands up for me. Okay, cool. Athletes. Yep. What position you play? Okay. Okay. What about you, King? You run track? You Usain Bolt? You not like that? Tyreek Hill speed? No. You slow? <laughs> right. So we got a couple minutes, man. So what I want to do, I want to speak life into y'all. And then after that, we're going to, uh, I'm going to let y'all answer some questions. Is that cool with y'all? All right, cool. So anybody know Kobe Bryant? All right, cool. Bet, right? So I was doing my research on Kobe, man. And one of the things that I realized about Kobe is I'm going to tell you guys two, two different stories with him. But the first thing that I want to talk about with Kobe is the, the video that I was watching. He was playing a game in Miami, right, in the playoffs. And he shot a, and he shot, a shot. And they were going into halftime. And Kobe went up to the ref. And he was like, yo, that rim's off two inches, bro. Right? The ref's like, Kobe, it's not off two inches. What you talking about? He said, bro, I'm telling you, it's off two inches. That's why I missed my shot. Kobe goes back into the locker room, sitting there, come back out. The ref goes up to him. What do you think the ref said to Kobe? He said, Kobe, after doing the math, you're right. It's off two inches. And I'm like, yo, this is crazy. I'm like, how my man know it's off two inches? And the reason why he knew that, y'all, is because his awareness. Right? Somebody say awareness. Right? And I want you to repeat this after me too. What I tune into is what I turn into. Come on, say it one more time. What I tune into is what I turn into. Never forget that, y'all. Like, I mean that, like, for real, for real. Like, when I seen Kobe talk about that, I'm like, yo, like, his level of IQ and his awareness to understand that the rim was off two inches, that means that that man practices day in and day out. The second story that I learned from Kobe. He was in Miami again, shooting, and he went to the court before everybody else, y'all. He in there, he's shooting, boom, boom, boom. This dude Isaiah Thomas comes. He sees Kobe on the court because they were playing against each other. He gets on the court, Kobe's still shooting. He said the moves that Kobe was doing wasn't even regular moves. He was spinning, ah, boom, sweat, deep sweat. And he said, man, like, I went to go sit down. He said, I sat down, and then he said, I have to ask Kobe why he's still working. Kobe was already in the gym four hours before homeboy came. Homeboy worked out for like 45 minutes. In the game, he said that same game, Kobe dropped 45 on us. I'm like, what? So he said, I got to figure out what's going on. I had to go up to Kobe after the game and ask him what was going on. So he went up to Kobe. He's like, yo, Kobe, like, I got to ask you a question. Like, how come you was in the gym? He said, because I seen you, and I just want to let you know that you will not outwork me. I'm going to say it one more time. He said, I seen you in the gym. I just want to let you know you're not going to outwork me. And so I don't know what your outwork is. Athletes, put your hands up again. Right? Anybody in here got a vision or a goal? Anybody? Vision or a goal? Okay, cool. Here's what I want you guys to have when you leave this room today. Right? Is I want you to have the mentality that says, I don't care who you are, where you from, when you get on this field, when you get on this court, when you get on this track, or even I don't care if you touch a mic, whatever it is, you will not outwork me. Come on, repeat after me. You won't outwork me. Come on, you won't outwork me. And I promise y'all, man, like I remember when I was in, when I played varsity football at Central High School in Rhode Island, y'all, I remember we playing against Johnston High School in the playoffs. And I remember going up to my coach, Coach Rios, we were about to run this play because we just need to be able to get a first down, y'all. That's all we needed to get a first down. So I go up to coach. I'm like, coach, man, like we need to run I right 24 lead. I said, we got a good running back. We got the best running back in the state. Let's run it. Coach is like, Will, we ain't going to run that. We're going to go in the spread. We're going to do jet sweep right, and we're going to allow our speed to be able to get, out, to get to the outside and get the first down. Do you think we got the first down? Nah. So I go back to my coach crying. I'm like, man, here I am with the visor, the Under Armour socks, Under Armour, everything. I'm like, yo, coach, like, come on, man. Like, let's just run. He said, Will, grab me by my shirt, pull me. He was like, hey, listen, don't cry about it. Do something about it. 
And so when I got back on that field, y'all, I just told the team, I said, listen, man, this is for the championship. This is my senior year, y'all. I'm talking about trying to be able to win a championship my senior year. It don't get no better than that. And I remember we called the play, we ran the play, and then we failed. And so what I want you guys to understand today is that, yo, I know we all come from different backgrounds, different livelihoods, different things that may be going on. For some of you, you may be the older brother. For some of you, you may be doing the cooking and the cleaning. For some of you, you may be even trying to get some of the jobs. I don't know. But what I do know is this, right? You can never allow your opposition or your failure to stop you from becoming who you need to become. Show of hands, 